Okay, so you guys are great in telling me, you know, uh, remembering that uh, Gregor Mendel worked with pea plants, okay? What we need to, what I want to emphasize is I asked you uh, the term dominant as base and recessive. Now these have to do with, does anybody remember what genotype and phenotype mean? Genotype and phenotype, who remembers what that means? Genotype is the genetic traits and then phenotype is the physical traits. Touchdown, absolutely right, okay? Very important, genotype is the actual genetics, okay? Phenotype is what it looks like, okay, the actual traits. And that gets, uh, that goes hand in hand with, the, if something's dominant, you can tell it's dominant because that's the trait you see, like brown eyes. Okay, or being tall is dominant. So that'd be like a big, denoted by a big T. But the, the, the trait that is expressed, which is, a better, which is a better way to say it, is what's dominant. Recessive is a trait you don't know about. Like a person might be tall, but they have, uh, one of the traits they have is the recessive T for short. Okay, and the reason you might wanna, now this is a baseline, we're using baseline characteristics. But where this gets really important, and the reason you need to learn about this is that uh, if people have, and, and they're, they're doing a lot of research and have like made a lot of breakthroughs with this, people who have, might have a recessive trait for a certain type of disease or a certain type of cancer. That's why you, uh, if people know about it in advance, okay, they can do some about it before it comes a problem. Okay, um, in the past, we used to do like a whole, our whole unit was based on like cancer. There was this video um, that I showed, of, it was like seven sisters and um, their, their mom had like passed away from breast cancer. So all seven sisters went and got tested to see if they had the gene for breast cancer. And it turns out one, of the, one out of the seven actually had it. And she was able to do things to like, to keep from getting it basically. Okay, just to kind of review, a gene, okay, is a, you know, uh, a, spe a specific group of basically protein sequence that, that denotes for a certain trait. And allele is a, is a specific form of the gene. Now, once again, genotype is genetic makeup, phenotype is physical appearance, okay, what it looks like, okay? Now, here's something you need to pay attention to because this is part of uh, what I say mission essential vocabulary for dealing with um, genetics and especially dealing with, uh, it's like the lingo for dealing with um, quadrat squares. Homozygous means the same, okay, the same trait. Okay, heterozygous means different trait or it's really a hybrid. Now, so, but the, the terms go hand in hand. So if I say homozygous dominant, that would mean I got two of the same trait, okay? And they're both capital letters, they're both dominant traits. If I said homozygous recessive, that means I have two recessive traits, okay? Uh, it goes, if I say heterozygous, okay? You know, it's two different traits. But if I say heterozygous dominant, that means that it's heterozygous, but it's dominant for a certain trait, okay? And that's, that's the reason I want you to go through this, the exercise we're gonna do, because it, it gives you practice at this. Okay, but at a minimum, you gotta know homozygous means the same, two of the same traits. Heterozygous means uh, different traits or is a hybrid. So a hybrid car, what does a hybrid car do? Hybrid car, what does a hybrid car do? Why do they call it a hybrid? Why do they call a car hybrid? Because it's low on gas. No, hybrid. Oh. A hybrid car does what? Why is it a hybrid? Okay, let's look at the definition here. Because hybrid. it's two different types of. Of what? See, head, uh, let's use the term we got here, heterozygous, right? That means it's a hybrid, it has two different traits. So a hybrid car do, uh, has gasoline and what else? It runs on gasoline and what else? Electric. It's electric. That's why they call it a hybrid. And let me tell you something. 
hybrid cars may not look the best. They might not be the most spacious, but if you, if you want to rent a car to take a road trip, get a hybrid. I rented a Prius and I, I, I uh, between Chicago, Illinois, and Atlanta, which is a 14 hour drive. I stopped for gas twice. They get like, I was getting like 45 miles or, or over that to the gallon. It, it was, it was, it was great, but it's not a whole lot of room in it. Okay, this is what we're going to be embarking on next. Um, Planet squares. Now, it doesn't matter which. It doesn't matter which. Uh, like if you you get two offspring or, or or you get two two individuals to to make the cross with. It doesn't really matter whether you put one on the top, which one you put on the top or on the side. Okay, that doesn't matter. That, that is not what matters, okay? So just put, just uh, arrange it like this. Now, when you're doing a, a Punnett square, okay, in this case, we got a big F and a little F, that makes a hybrid, uh, a heterozygous, or you're crossing two hybrids. And it's important, important for you to know what cross you're doing or whatever, whether it's two hybrids or two homozygous, dominant, recessive, okay? Now, the... Uh, the the exercise I have has on the sheet. It has instructions. It's like a little tutorial uh, for you guys to uh, be able to do this. What I would suggest is maybe getting like a scratch paper because they talk about if you could draw this out instead of just doing it on a trying to figure it out on your computer, it might be a little better. Okay, it's up to you. But when you make the cross, right? You have big F and little F. These are uh, let's see the trait. Big F is for freckles. And little F is for not having freckles. Okay. So you make the cross this way. Big F to big F. Okay. And this will be homozygous dominant for what? Big F is for freckles. So if I have two big Fs, what is that? What is it? Two, what, the two big Fs? Well, would the person here have freckles or not? Yes. They would have freckles. Okay, so so and if if it's two of something, it's homozygous, right? So the way to say it would be homozygous dominant for freckles. What about this person? You got a big F and a little F. Would this person have freckles or not? Yeah. Uh, no, not really. Okay. Well, well, let's see. We got the big F, and the big F is dominant, and the little F is recessive. So if the, the you got a big F first, that means it dominates over the little F, right? So this person would have freckles, right? But uh, it, it has the trait not to have freckles. Okay, everybody kind of see that? That's why you and that's why you always put the you always put the capital letter first so you know what's dominant. So in this one right here, the person would still have freckles, and, and right here too. What about right here? This is homozygous, but it's not dominant. It's what? Recessive. Recessive, right? And we said that not having freckles was a recessive trait. So would this person have freckles? No. No, this person would not have freckles. So you have two recessive traits. Now, what you know what's cool about learning how to do this is in the in the waiting room, while we were waiting on our son to be born, I was able to figure out what my son's uh, blood type was going to be using the punnet. I wrote a punnet square on a napkin and I was able to figure out based on uh, my, uh, his mom and my blood type, what his blood type would be. And I was right. So I was right. Cause I happen to have the blood type I have is type O and that's homozygous recessive. So, and his mom was type O. So that, you know, if you get two type O, people, there's there's almost no, absolutely no chance of having anything but type O. So. Okay, this is just a, another iteration of the same thing. Uh, in this, this uh, particular punnet square, you had, uh, this person is homozygous, what? Dominant for being tall. And this person was was uh, homozygous recessive from being short. Now, my question is, uh, how many of out of four kids, how many of them are tall? All of them. All of them. So if you had to give a percentage, you'd say 100%, right? 
All of them are tall, but all of them have the what tra uh, what trait do all of them have? All of them have the, the trait for shortness. Okay. All of them have the trait for shortness. So in this first generation, everybody was tall, but in the second generation, depending on uh, you know, who uh the offspring marry, uh it, it's possible that not all of the all of the children will be tall, some will be short. Everybody kind of tracking on that a little bit? Any questions? Okay. So I'm going to go to student view. That's how I like to do it. So we go to student view, just like I'm, because uh, by the way, I'm if you, I'm the test student. They always have a test student. So, um, so we're going to go to student view, and this is how it's going to look. And then, so then we're going to click on our worksheet and in our worksheet we're going to practice doing Punnett squares now Punnett square uh well, it tells you like what it is what i would do is and it even gives you a great example okay so you're going to read all that and then so when we get to the actual questions okay uh i would actually draw this out okay if you're in the classroom i probably would have printed this out but i would draw it out like in pea plants uh, you know, tall is dominant, short is recessive. Complete the Punnett square of the following, which is a lot like, and so you would put big T, big T up here, or big T, big T right here, and big T, little T, and you would do the cross, and then you, and then it just asks you, like, and what percentage, you know, uh, would be tall or whatever, and that's just out of four. So if all of them are tall, what percent is that? A hundred percent. If only one of them out of four was tall, what percent would that be? If, if one 25%. out of five percent, twenty-five percent. So that that's that is what we're uh, that's what we're shooting for, and that's what we're doing. Now look, I did, I picked this assignment. Okay, my new theme for you guys is picking assignments that I know you can do. I have no doubt you can finish during class time. Okay, but I want you to take your time with it, and I want you to put your answers down, answer all the questions. Okay, I would like for you to, you know, even though I can't see you at home, to know you have a, a piece of scrap paper, but I would like you actually like write it down and try to work it out and stuff like that. Uh, and you should have enough time. Okay, you should have enough time to finish this and not have homework. My goal is to max out on what we do in class so we don't have homework and we don't you know have seven assignment assignments to do the night before grades are doing because that's stressful on me and you and and uh at the end of this particular quarter it's going to be hard you know what i mean so to preclude that i'm giving you time now handle it you know uh do it if you have any questions okay you ask me and another thing and i can't i can't make you guys do that one of the reasons i put you guys in breakout rooms is it's not for you to just sit there and be individuals but to talk about the assignment. So if one person doesn't understand, you know, a lot of times, you know, other people will. Because part of education is working together. That you know, you know, there's some schools, there, uh, like in in college and stuff, where you're required to like have a be in a study group, almost to pass. So something to think about. Does everybody understand what we're doing? Okay, you got about. Let's see, you got at least thirty minutes. You should be able to handle this. Now, don't rush through it just so you can say you, you turned it in either. Don't do that. All right, breakout time. 